Hello and welcome. This is three pools, ten minutes. Azure Synapse pools in a hurry. Synapse Analytics. It has been called many, many things. The Limitless Analytics Solution. The Boundless Analytics Solution. The Useless Analytics Solution. Mm, I wouldn't go quite that far. And in fact, I think it'll be an amazing and great solution when all the bits and pieces are finally there. Because as it stands, there are some quirks and there is some confusion, not least about the different parts of it. And that's the crux. It's supposed to be this integrated, seamless analytics solution. But it isn't. Not yet. And that means learning some new things especially if you're like me, coming from the database world. A while back, as I was trying to get my old head around the new toys, I had a bit of an epiphany. Now, I don't know if this is the case, but it felt to me like if Synapse is largely built by people coming from the big data side of things, but it's marketed to the people that come from the standard relational database world, this leads to some serious confusion in my head as I, I didn't grasp why something would be done the way it actually is. It's obvious if you're coming from one side of the fence, but it's kind of weird if you're stuck on the other side. And that insight was what I needed to shift my mental gears and to start figuring out where and how to use the different components of Synapse Analytics as they stand today. My name is Alexander. I have 25 years in IT, pretty much all of it spent with data, databases, and the like. I'm a data platform MVP. I'm a certified trainer. I co-host a podcast called Needy Tech, and I make data matter because only data that matters can inspire any change. They, these are the primary components of Synapse Analytics as of today. If you turn your back on this, it's going to change. That's the, the, um, the state of the play here. Now, we're going to focus on the pools and we're going to leave the pipelines, the explorer and the studio to people that are much smarter in, than me. In fact, there are so many awesome sessions today that you definitely should tune into. And, and these are just a few of the, the people talking about uh, Synapse. I highly recommend you check them out. So what do we have? Three pools. They are sharing one word. Pool. That's pretty much it. They're pretty darn different when you start to try to figure them out. So we're going to go through them, look at them each one by one. We're going to start with what's known as the serverless SQL pool. This is built on something called Polaris. And if you haven't heard about that, Google it, because it is super, super cool. I think this is definitely the, the future. This is the diff uh, direction we need to go with databases. And this is actually closest to your, your garden variety SQL Server, but it is not a complete SQL Server. So this is absolutely fantastic for exploration and, and what's known as simple data engineering. Now, simple data engineering, you can get away with a lot in here because you can uh, do anything in SQL almost that you could think of. And, and SQL in itself is a pretty powerful language. It doesn't start up. This thing is instantly on and you can just log in and start uh, shooting uh, queries. This is also great for what's known as a logical data warehouse where you have your data stored in a data lake. In fact, there is no data files, if you will, in Synapse uh, serverless SQL. It's all stored in the data lake, meaning that a logical data warehouse where everything is in, in CSV or Parquet files, it's usable. Andy Cutler has a lot of great uh, uh, stuff written about this in his blog, so definitely check that out. It also means that I can use this for an endpoint for Power BI. So Power BI can connect to this, and then this talks to whatever is in your data lake. Really powerful stuff. What is not? It's not finished. It's nowhere near finished. There are so many holes, so many weird stuff in this product right now. And again, it's going to be amazing when it's done. It's not quite there yet. And this also means that 
where you're used to having data types and, and metadata in a normal relation database, you might not. CSV files, for instance, they're pl uh, flat. They're, they, there's nothing inherent metadata in them. Parquet does, but CSV does not. That means that you need to think about that in a whole different way. And it is not a performance powerhouse because several reasons, but the chief among them, it's actually uh, grabbing data from a data lake, which is a storage account. So then we have the SQL data warehouse. This is the MPP architecture, the, the massively parallel architecture, basically the, the, uh, the tool that came out in the 2010s. This is analytics of relational data at a massive scale. That means that you need massive amounts of data and it, it is fantastic at working with massive billions of rows of data. It also means that it is lightning fast if you have the right circumstances. This is a Formula One car. If you have the, the, the right tires, if you have the right engineers, it's gonna go blazingly fast. It also means that it is highly complex, extremely more complicated than anything else, basically. Hold that thought because what it's not, it's not a data warehouse running 24 seven because it is expensive. It is very expensive per minute, literally, or per hour. And it's not for anything except large, huge data volumes. If you don't have billions of rows, don't bother. This is not the tool for you. And it is definitely not very flexible. It does not auto scale. There is no automatic management. It does not easily consume external data. In essence, this is a one trick pony that lags behind. Now, if you have the engineers, if you have the tires, if you have the track, i.e. your Formula One car will perform like nothing else. But if you don't, this is not the tool you want. That brings us to the dark horse from a database perspective. Apache Spark is a parallel processing framework that supports in-memory processing to boost the performance. This is not your stomping ground. You're usually stomping ground for database people. But it turns out that this is absolutely exceptional for data engineering. Like, wow, that's what it does best. And since it is so flexible for removing data around and, and massaging the data as you would like, it, it also is good for advanced analytics and, and machine learning because it's already built in. It supports many languages, Python, Scala. Unfortunately, there is no R uh, support for it yet that I know of, uh, and, and SQL. So it, it doesn't matter from which walk of life you come, you're gonna find yourself uh, having a great home in, in Spark. What it isn't. This is not the pool to rule all pools. You can run SQL in it, but just because you can doesn't mean you should. It pales in comparison to a proper relational database. And it's not very multi-user, just like the data warehouse, which I didn't tell you. It's not designed to handle an, a large number of concurrent queries. That's not the way it's built. And it's not very serverless. In fact, you need to start it up, you need to care and feed for your pools and all that stuff. So, but if we had a proper serverless Spark, wow, that would be something. So where does this leave us? Well, here are the different bits and pieces that we have. And we can use the serverless pools for data exploration. That's what it's really, really good at. Or we can use the data warehouse for extremely specific needs. We have a large enough amount of data, we have the people to handle it, and we need specific uh, results. That's where you have the Azure Data Warehouse or the, the, um, the dedicated pools. Data engineering, if you need to move a large amount of data, if you need to transform a lot of data, if you need to massage the data, well, that's your, your thing. It is going to blow just about anything else out of the water. It's a new thing to learn, but in my view, it is definitely well worth doing so. Well, there you have it. Three pools, 10 minutes. We're in a hurry. I've got 10 more seconds to go. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is a fantastic conference. Do check out the other uh, sessions. My name is Alexander, and I thank you so much for your time.